Hey everybody, this is Ari, and today I'm going to show you a little program that I made on my calculator. As most of you are probably aware, Texas Instruments graphing calculators can be quite powerful. You can do all sorts of stuff from graphing, to generating random numbers, to storing variables for later use, and even performing incredibly complicated calculations. But little beknownst to most people, beneath this layer of outer common knowledge and relative simplicity, there are more complicated and less known features to be explored. Some of these include logic gates, archiving information to clear up RAM, and even drawing on the graph, which can be both funny and kind of terrifying at the same time. All that aside, the function we will be focusing on today is the programming feature. Yes, that's right, you can program on your calculator. First of all, if you don't know how to program, this may be a little confusing for you. Secondly, if you do know how to program, this will still be confusing for you because, to put it simply, the programming language sucks. It's extremely simple and restricting, and the pamphlet doesn't explain how to use it at all. Hello darkness, my old friend. Having taught myself how to use the language, I had to go through a lot of trial and error, specifically error. I'm no programming noob, I've done some visual basic myself, and even created a text-based adventure game. This language, on the other hand, was a little bit more difficult to learn. It wasn't until just recently that I figured out enough about the language to create a working game. After my friends and I made some major breakthroughs in the area of image storing and drawing on the graph, we determined that it would be entirely possible to create a simple Pokemon game, as well as others. I took it upon myself to make Pokemon while my friends began development of a memory game as well as a top-down dungeon adventure game. Well enough said about history and stuff, let's check it out. Alright, here it is, the Pokemon program. It starts out with this little splash screen. As you can see, it is currently in version 1.6, but I may update it over time. Alright, here we go. There is an info section, but since I will be providing a download in the description, I'll let you guys check it out. Okay, start game. Alright, now we get to set the level of our Lapras, so 100. And now we get to set the level of the opposing Mewtwo. Since Mewtwo is stronger than Lapras by default, I'll set it to 85 to even it out. Now the health multiplier. This will increase the health of both Pokemon if you want a longer battle. We'll just keep it at 1 for simplicity. Now here it is, the battle screen with Lapras versus Mewtwo. Now a lot of you may be wondering, why do you only get one Pokemon? And why is it Lapras? Well first of all, you can blame the limitations of the calculator and surprisingly not my laziness. The calculator only allows for 10 images to be stored. And since I need to make a few animations for each Pokemon, plus one image for the health bars, I ran out of space. As for why I chose Lapras and Mewtwo, I need to have two Pokemon from the first generation for sprite size that were easily recognizable. I also didn't want your Pokemon to be stronger than the opponents, or to have any special moves due to the lack of variables on the calculator. The game will decide who goes first based on speed, like the real games, so Mewtwo will move first based on his ridiculous base speed. Using a pseudo-random number generator and a higher or lower probabilities for specific actions, the calculator will decide on Mewtwo's move. In this case, he's chose Psychic. Now in your turn, you get to choose from four different attacks as well. Before, I mentioned that I didn't want to have many special effects, but here I made a few exceptions. As you can see, Lapras has Protect, which does work, and Ice Beam, which can freeze. Similarly, Mewtwo has Shadow Ball and Focus Blast, which can both lower Lapras' defense. So I'm going to go with Ice Beam and try to freeze Mewtwo. And look at that, it did freeze. That's actually pretty impressive, considering this is the first take of the video, and there's only a 1 in 10 chance of getting a freeze. Well, either way, it's pretty helpful for me, so I'm not complaining. Now, on Mewtwo's turn, he won't get to move, because he's frozen, but there's a 1 in 10 chance that he'll frost right away, but he didn't, so that's alright. Now, back to my turn. I'm gonna choose Surf now, just so I can show you guys some of the animations. Alright, there it goes. Tells me how much damage it did. Alright, Mewtwo doesn't get to move again because he's still frozen. Now on my turn, I'm going to go use Hydro Pump. And that seems to have done it. Mewtwo has lost and we have won the game. So there it is, Pokemon on the TI-84 calculator. I'm really sorry I wasn't able to add more Pokemon and whatnot, but I really hope you guys still enjoyed it. As for you competitive Pokemon players out there who are wondering about the Eevees and IVs of the Pokemon, they are both set to zero. 
I could potentially add in a feature that allows for the modification of both the EVs and IVs of both Pokemon, so if enough people want it, I will probably put it in. Similarly, I also may be convinced to add a few more options for moves in, or even different versions of the game featuring different Pokemon suggested by viewers. If you guys have any other suggestions or questions about the program in general, feel free to let me know in the comment section. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so, as it helps motivate me to do more of this stuff. Also, if you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and say so in the comment section. Anyway, this has been Eri, and I hope to see you guys next time for some other cool videos. See you later.